So my name is Angela Pham, and my research project is breaking suppression, bringing biological motion into conscious awareness. So just to start out, the perception of body movements is especially critical for communication as well as social interaction. And even in our daily lives, we commonly see human body movements in the form of a walking person. And in the lab, human biological motion is studied using point light walkers, which are shown here. And a point light walker is essentially a series of about 10 to 15 dots placed at strategic joints along a walking human's body. And even with this sparse information, the movement of these dots can still be perceived as a walking person. So the goal of the present study is to determine whether biological motion is special or preferentially processed more so than non-biological motion. So the question that we're testing is, does biological motion receive preferential processing even outside of visual awareness? So to test that, we started by looking at these two different stimuli shown here. On the left, you can see an intact human point light walker. And this, is a, this will look like a moving person and is representative of biological motion. And the other stimulus that we used was a spatially scrambled point light walker, which is shown here. And this is spatially scrambled by randomizing the starting location of each of the dots. So while the form of the figure looks like just a scrambled form and does not look like a human, it serves as a non-biological control since it is no longer human shaped. However, it does still contain the preserved motion of the original walker. So to look at how these two stimuli enter awareness, we began by rendering them unconscious to the viewer and masking them below the level of conscious awareness. And we did this by using a method known as continuous flash suppression, or CFS. And CFS is essentially a method of using flashing rectangles in order to render certain images or videos unconscious to the viewer. And this is a figure displaying how CFS works. So to one eye, we present the CFS, or the high contrast flashing Mondrian rectangle rectangular shapes, and to the, to the other eye we present our low contrast point light walker, which will be moving. And the combination of these two results in a stable percept, where the point light walker is now masked or hidden by the CFS, or the flashing rectangles. And you can see that one eye is still perceiving the point light walker, even though it seems like the subject can only view the flashing rectangles, meaning that the point light walker is being process at an unconscious level. So over here, you can see that for our experimental design, we will be gradually increasing the contrast of the point light walker until it is bright enough to pop out of the flashing rectangles. And this is termed breaking suppression. So you can see in the figure here, the two first columns are what is presented to either eye, and the last column is the percept, or what the subject can actually see. So you can see the point light walker begins as very dim, low contrast, and unconscious, and slowly it gets brighter and brighter until it pops out of the flashing rectangles, termed breaking suppression. And this is a time at which it enters visual awareness, and it is measured as a reaction time. And the reaction time for breaking suppression is indicative of how important or how preferentially processed a certain stimulus is because if it has a lower reaction time, that means it broke through the flashing rectangles at a lower contrast level. So we expected to find, in com comparing the intact point light walker to the scrambled point light walker, we expected that the intact human point light walker would break suppression more quickly than the scrambled point light walker. And this would be due to the biological relevance and importance of a human figure as compared to just scrambled dot motions. And indeed, this is what we found. In experiment one, where we tested intact versus the scrambled point light walker, we found that the human point light walker broke suppression about 12% more quickly than the scrambled point light walker. And we we concluded that this was because the human walker contains a biological meaningfulness that is not present in the scrambled form of dots. And moving on to experiment two, we wanted to see whether this effect we found in the first experiment could be due to 
a general task difficulty which has nothing to do with awareness. So we essentially performed the same experiment without the CFS. So there was no masking that occurred and the subjects just saw the two stimuli. And we found that there was no significant difference between point light walker type for this task, showing that the effect we found in experiment one was not due to a task difficulty, but most likely due to the biological relevance of the human point light walker as compared to the scramble. And in experiment three, we performed a non-biological control and we wanted to test whether the effect we found is possibly due to just a, any coherent familiar form breaking suppression more quickly than a scrambled form. And maybe it doesn't have anything to do with biological motion at all. So we tested this by using an X as a stimulus. There is an intact X and a scrambled X shown here. And we found that when we did the experiment with these two stimuli, then there was only a 2% difference between breaking suppression times for these two stimuli. And this is much less than the 12% difference that we found in experiment one. And we, pre and we would like to conclude that this difference of a lower degree is possibly due to the X form missing the biological importance of a human form. And this could account for why there is a smaller difference between breaking suppression times. So in summary, the human point light walker was detected more quickly and at a lower contrast level than the scrambled point light walker. And shown by our two experimental controls, we found that this difference was not due to a general task difficulty and was largely not due to just the coherence of a familiar structured form. In conclusion, the difference that we found in experiment one was due to the biological relevance and importance of a human point light walker as compared to just the scrambled motion of dots. And this serves as evidence that social stimuli are preferentially processed below conscious awareness at the unconscious level. And for future directions, we're currently investigating multisensory perception and how this occurs. So we plan to look at how the addition of auditory footstep sounds may improve visual detection of the point light walker. And for acknowledgments, I'd like to thank Luke Miller, Akila Kadambi, Edward Nguyen, Alvin Lee, and my PI, Dr. Aisha Saigon, and as well as the rest of the members of the Cognitive Neuroscience and Neuropsychology Lab. And also I'd like to thank the Qualcomm Institute and CalIT2 for funding this research project.